So when we talk about the emergence of civilization in the Indian subcontinent, we generally refer to the Indus Valley civilization. However, in recent decades, we have uncovered another equally important and equally old civilizational cluster. And this is what we might call the Ganges Valley civilization, which is centered around the other great river of the Indian subcontinent. And this is a very important civilizational cluster because it solves many important questions that archaeologists had till about three or four decades ago, especially regarding the domestication of rice. Now, when we discuss civilization in the Indus Valley or civilization in Mesopotamia, the domesticated crops there are generally wheat and barley. But rice, as we know, is the other important grain for which civilization, especially in eastern India and in southern India, and in East Asia as a whole is crucially dependent. So first we investigate the site at the present day village of Chopani Mando. And here we find the first identification of rice grains, which have been harvested from the wild, dating to the 9th or 8th millennium BC. And remember harvesting rice grains or harvesting any wild grains is just one step away from domestication. Then, at this other site of Koldiva, we actually find signs in the 7th and 5th millennium BC, this, this long spectrum of time, of the domestication of rice. So Koldiva and another site known as Mahagara. And here we have found this crucial archaeological records of the first signs of the domestication of rice. So the radiocarbon dates for the rice grains that we have found at Koldiva are varying. So some grains date to about 6500 BC others to 5400 BC, and yet others to 4500 BC. But in this broad spectrum of time, beginning from Chopani Mando to Koldiva and Mahagara, we can confidently say that rice was being harvested initially and then also farmed and grown. Another smaller civilizational cluster which emerges just a little time later is around the Bilan River Valley in the Vindhyas which is another site of original Neolithic transformation and the beginnings of agriculture and rice and even the domestication of animals. So this has been dated to about 4000 BC. And similarly, we have found other sites around this other river valley called the Son River Valley. So together, this comprises what is known as the Vindhya Neolithic Cultural Complex. So already we are seeing these multiple clusters where this Neolithic transformation happened in the Indian subcontinent. So we focus, of course, on the greater Indus Valley, which is again an aggregation of different Neolithic zones, or different zones which came together to form this greater Indus Valley civilization. In addition to that, we have the Ganges Neolithic complex, and we have this central Indian Neolithic complex around the Vindhyas. So in the eastern Vindhya region, we find rice husks, embedded in pottery dating to about the mid-2nd millennium, mid-4th or mid-2nd millennium BC spectrum. Then at yet another site known as Malhar, we have found evidence of cultivated rice husks dating to 5400 BC or 4600 BC. But one of the most interesting sites which has been uncovered in recent times is the site known as Damdama. And here we have found signs of cultivated rice dating to 8,800 or 8,600 BC. Along with the site of Damdama, there is another associated site of Likhaya, which is slightly further away from the Gangatic Plains towards the Kaimur Hills, which shows some convergence between the people of the plains and the upper hills. And here again, we have found signs of cultivated rice dating to the 7th millennium BC. And these are important sites which were inhabited for long periods of time. At Damdama, for instance, we find evidence of settlement of 10 layers. Remember, these layers are archaeological layers of soil which grow as human beings continue to inhabit one place over a long period of time. So the more time is spent, the more archaeological layers you will find. And the deepest layers go back to the oldest periods of settlement. And in Damdama we find archaeological layers, 10 archaeological layers, which show different phases of human adaptation in this region, 
we find layers corresponding to hunter gathering to harvesting followed by layers of domestication and these layers of domestication are in the 9th millennium bc so remember then this site must have been inhabited for perhaps thousands of years uh, before domestication of rice happened here then yet another important site is lahura deva and here we find evidence of rice cultivation dating to initially 5300 bc but in some recent investigations also perhaps still 6300 bc so this was a period of transition again lasting a millennia and this is important because domestication is always a process and it is not a revolution that happens in one generation and so, so we get different evidence at different point of time of different adaptations of people to different conditions and remember this region was a highly forested region and resources especially nutritional resources were also available in the wild so harvesting grain or farming grain was only a necessity perhaps in times of perhaps climate related stress or perhaps other reasons when game hunting game was was not freely available due to whatever reasons now interestingly signs of metallurgy in this region or in this gangatic pali civilization are rather rare and staggered and this might be because of the nature of agriculture which was uh, carried on in this region so farming rice is very different from farming wheat or barley so rice is essentially what we call wet field cultivation while wheat and barley need you to plow and break dry soil plant your crop and then then feed that soil with water and nutrition in contrast to wet field irrigation where you create these shallow ponds in which you can easily break the soil this wet soil and then plant your grains and there is perhaps another reason for this we get evidence that in some places people use this wood known as the mesua feria which is also known as iron wood as a substitute of metal and this wood was in fact brought in from the eastern himalayan mountains remember i mentioned the site called lekahia which is in the kemur foothills and this site might have initially developed as this node in this trade network which brought in forest produce from the eastern hills so this iron wood is a good substitute for metal and definitely stronger in many instances than copper and when we transition to the iron age from around 1600 bc then we see people here quickly transitioning to the use of metal so we see that the teleological logic of transitioning of civilization from the use of stone to copper to iron doesn't really apply in all instances of civilizational development and progress because people essentially adapt to the environment in which they settle and they use the resources which are available to them depending on the nature of the environment so remember all this civilizational development is happening simultaneously with the greater indus valley civilization so are there signs of contact and exchange between these two civilizational zones now at the early harappan settlement of kunal in the eastern regions of this indus valley civilization we find evidence of rice dating to about 2800 or 2600 bc so this was one of the puzzles for archaeologists and uh, now that we have uncovered this greater ganges valley civilization we can confidently say that the transmission of rice happened from the east to the west and there was also interestingly lots of transmission from the west to the east because later on in some sites especially in this vindhya region we find the cultivation of barley and wheat and possibly also some domesticated animals were passed on to the east interestingly at this site called senowar we find evidence of the cultivation of watermelons now watermelon is a crop which is native to africa so this crop traveled all the way from africa through this greater indus valley region which remember had trading contacts with the civilizations of mesopotamia and perhaps also of northern and eastern africa to this ganges valley civilization yet another puzzle was the discovery of clove in one of the mesopotamian cities again dating to about 2500 bc and clove is native to southeast asia 
So again, this gives us an indication that there might have been some form of relay trade which linked Southeast Asia with this Ganges Valley civilization, perhaps through the River Ganges or the River Ganga, coming up the River Ganga from the Bay of Bengal. And there was perhaps then this transmission on towards the Indus Valley civilization and further on towards, towards of course, Mesopotamia. So this world system of the early ages of civilization was much, much vaster than we initially knew when we first began to uncover these civilizations in the beginning of the 20th century. And perhaps this was not just a, a, an Indian or a West Asian international system, but perhaps even a pan-Eurasian international system extending into the region which is now known as the Indo-Pacific. Now, at this moment, we do not know much about the culture of the people of this Ganges Valley civilization. But we can confidently say that there was a lot of two-way acculturation between the people of this civilizational zone and the people of the greater Indus Valley region. Because remember, we have found signs of exchange of material and, and crop products. And so definitely there were contacts between people. And whenever there are contacts, there is also exchange of culture. And in recent times, there has been some analysis of the old or archaic linguistic structure of the Sanskrit language, which, remember, emerges in India around the second millennium BC. And there has been some sign that some crops or some plants, especially medicinal plants, might have traveled, in fact, from the eastern zone. And they find mention in the oldest Sanskrit text, which is the Rig Veda which was perhaps composed beginning from around 2000 BC to about 1500 BC. And this period was also a crucial transitionary period for the greater Indus Valley civilization. Now, initially scholars spoke of a collapse of the Indus Valley civilization, perhaps as a consequence of some invasions from the north, northern zone. But in recent times, we are moving to a different picture of transformation. So now the consensus in archaeological and perhaps also historical circles is that the Indus Valley civilization did not collapse at any particular time, but began a period of transition from around 2000 BC, lasting to around 1500 and perhaps even 1300 BC. And this transition happened with an eastward shift of the Indus Valley civilization and a settlement of regions in north central India. And perhaps this was also a time when the people of the Ganges Valley civilization perhaps began moving westward and bringing some of their ideas. So we know for a fact that there were, this was a period of migrations and people from central Eurasia were also migrating into this North Indian zone, bringing in the Indo-European culture at that point of time. So as far as we know, this early Vedic culture of the second millennium BC, which again formed the Hindu culture that we know today, was a mingling of all these different strands of culture emerging from the Ganges Valley civilization and with the substratum of the Indus Valley civilization and of course the new ideas which are also being brought in by the Indo-Europeans. And this is something that I will explore in a future presentation. But I hope this introduction to the Ganges Valley civilization gives us a better understanding of how civilization developed in the Indian subcontinent and forms a good basis for our subsequent discussions.